Okay, good morning. We are going to, um, these are the solutions to your practice test A. Um, so we're going to go through these problems. So the first problem is um, 2, 2y plus 10x equals negative 10. Now the directions to this say to specifically graph this using the x and y intercepts. So we need to find our x and y intercepts. And the way that you find your x intercept is to plug zero in for y. So we're gonna do two times zero plus 10x equals negative 10. Two times zero is zero, so we are left with 10x equals negative 10. And once we divide both sides by 10, um, our x-intercept is negative one. And you write that as negative one, zero. That's how you write that. Now for our y-intercept, um, we are going to plug 0 in for x. So I have 2y plus 10 times 0 equals negative 10. Okay, our 10 times 0 is just 0, so I have 2y equals negative 10. I divide by 2, and I'm left with y equals negative 5, and you would write that as 0, negative 5. Now remember, um, one of the things that students make a mistake on here is they then put those two numbers together and um, do an ordered pair of negative 1, negative 5, and that is very wrong. That is not a correct way to do that. Um, and so here... I am graphing using my intercepts. And so my first point is um, negative one, zero. And so that is right here. My second point is zero, negative five. And that is right there. And so the answer looks like this. And there's my line. I can't get the arrow on this one for some reason. There we go. So there is, is my line. So your answer is going to be the graph of the line as well as this part right here, the 0, negative 5, and the negative 1, 0. Okay. Now our next question is asking for slope, um, and remember slope is change in y over change in x. Um, so we're going to subtract our y values, and then we're going to subtract our x values. Okay, I'm going to start with this point right here, and I have 19 minus negative 6, and then I have negative 19 minus 2. Okay, the negative negative 6 becomes plus a positive. So 19 minus negative 6 becomes 19 plus positive 6. So that's going to give me positive 25 over negative 21. We ask ourselves if that can simplify, and it cannot. So I am left with negative 25 over 21. And this right here is my final answer for this one. Okay? Now, number three is asking us to graph the equation using the slope and the y-intercept. So the first thing that we have to do here is solve for y. Um, so I am going to move the 5x over. Okay, now don't lose your negative. That is something that very, very often students drop, is they drop that negative right there. So I have negative y equals negative 5x plus 3, and now I need to divide everything by negative 1 um, because I've got a negative in front of that y. So then I'm left with y equals 5x minus 3. So my slope here is going to be 5 because my slope is what's with the x, and my y-intercept is going to be the negative 3. So now we can graph that. And when we graph it, um, we're going to start with our 
um, y-intercept, which is negative 3. And then we're going to do our slope, which is up 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and over 2. Okay. And... Here we are. And that is the graph of 5x minus y. Oh, no. So um, our slope is five. Okay. Okay. Um, I made a mistake right here. For some reason, I did my slope is up 5 over 2. Our slope is up 5 over 1. Um, so I am erasing this line right here. Um, and we are going to re-graph this. I don't have any idea what I was thinking, so I apologize for that. My slope is, is 5 over 1. 5 over 1, not 5 over 2. Um, so here is my y-axis and here's my x-axis. So we are going to try this again. Okay, so I'm starting at negative 3, which is right here, um, and then I am going up 5 over 1. So I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and over 1. Um, I apologize about that. And then we are going to graph this right here and here is my line there you go so your slope here is five over one five over one okay now number four is asking us the directions say to find the line right a slope intercept equation for a line with the given characteristics. And so this passes through these two points. So the first thing that we have to do here is find the slope. We have to find the slope of these two. Okay, we're going to find the slope. Um, so change in y over change in x. So I have negative 5 um, minus 6. And then I have 3 minus 1. So I started with this point right here and said negative 5 minus 6, and then 3 minus 1. So my slope here is negative 11 over 2. Negative 11 over 2. Now the second thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to use either one of these points and plug them into um, point slope form. Okay, so I'm going to use the point slope form of the line. In point slope form is y minus y sub 1 equals m times x minus x sub 1. And we can use either one of these points. Now, um, to plug into point slope form, I'm going to go ahead and use this one because they're both positive. Um, and so I am going to have uh, y minus 6, and that's equals my slope over x minus 1, okay? Um, then my last step is to solve for y. I'm going to put it in slope-intercept form, and I do that by solving for y, solving for y. So I've got y minus 6 equals negative 11 over 2 x. Negative 11 over 2 times negative 1 is going to give me positive 11 over 2. Okay, now my next step here is to add 6 to both sides. I'm adding 6 to both sides. Okay, um, so when I look at the fraction that I have, the fraction that I'm adding, um, and I'm going to do that up here, is 11 over 2 plus 6 over 1. So I have to change that 6 over 1 to a denominator of 2. And 1 goes into 2 twice, and 2 times 6 is 12. 
Um, so then I have 23 over 2. So 11 over 2 plus 6 over 1 is 23 over 2. So my final answer here, and I'm going to rewrite it right here, is y equals negative 11 over 2x plus 23 over 2. And um, we did have to use um, a common denominator. We were um, adding some fractions together, so we did have to do that. So um, just be sure you're comfortable um, with those fractions. Okay, um, number five is one of the ones that I did in class because it, um, it, it did confuse some students. You will see something like this on your test, and you will see something like this on your final exam. So I want you to be comfortable with this type of problem. Um, this is a linear word problem. So we've got to do two different things. We've got to create a, a linear equation, and then we are going to predict a future salary based on that linear equation. Um, so the first thing that we're going to do here is we're going to find the slope. Now, this problem told us what points to use. Okay, the problem says um, model the data with a linear function using the points one, $24,800, and three, $26,700. So what that means on year one, the salary was $24,800. And on year three, the, sal th the salary was $26,700. So it tells us that those are the two points that we're going to use. Um, so I've got to find the slope by using those two points. So I'm going to have $24,800 minus $26,700. So that's my change in Y over my change in x, um, which is, whoops, and I should have done it the other way just to keep everything positive, but I didn't, so we're going we're gonna to do it this way. Um, 24,800 minus 26,700. So I'm going to do that um, off to the side. So I've got 26,000. Okay, so when I subtract those two, I get negative 1,900. Um, one minus three is negative two, and a negative over a negative is a positive. So my slope is 1,900 divided by two, um, and that is gonna give me 950. So my slope, or my rate of change here, is 950. So that's my first step. My second step here, is that I am going to find the equation. Um, and I do that by using point slope form. Okay, so I'm finding the equation of the line. So I'm going to use point slope form. Okay, and I am definitely going to run out of room. So I'm going to, oops, I'll, I'll do it right down here. So I've got y um, minus y sub 1 equals m over x minus x sub 1. Okay, and I'm going to use this point right here. Um, so I have y minus $24,800 equals my slope or my rate of change, which is 950. And then I have x minus 1. Okay, so I've got to solve for y equals mx plus b. So I'm going to um, distribute first. So I have y minus 24800 equals 950x minus 950. Okay, now I'm going to add 24,800 to both sides. Okay, and so I have 950x plus, and when I subtract 24,800, and I subtract 950, then I am going to get 23,850. And I need to just confirm that. I did that in my head, so let me confirm that. Okay, so we are good. That is correct. We have y equals 950x plus 23,850. Um, and so this is the equation of our line. Now, I have run out of space, so I need to erase some of this stuff. Um, 
and I'm going to keep my equation because that's super important. I'm going to rewrite my equation right here. Y equals 950X plus $23,850. Okay, and so this is the model. This is the equation that models the salary. So the third thing that I'm going to do is I am going to determine what year is 1990. And that is year zero. So since 1990 is year zero, this year 2002 is year 12. Okay. Um, and so some students will want to plug in 2012. We're not plugging in 2012. We're plugging in, in just the 12. Okay, because year 1990 is year zero. So if 1990 is year zero, then 1991 is year one, and 1992 is year two. So we keep going, and when we get to year 2002, then that is year 12. So we are not plugging in 2002 for X, we're plugging in year 12, okay? So we, our third step is to plug in value for year 2012, 2002 to determine salary for that year. And that's our last step for this problem. Okay, so I'm gonna have Y equals 950 times 12 plus $23,850. And when I multiply 950 times 12, I get 11,400 dollars. Then I am going to add that to 23,850. And when I add those two together, I get... I'm sorry, this one is a little bit choppy. Um, my answer is different than what the answer key said, and so I wanted to pause um, and see where the mistake was. And um, I cannot find a mistake with me, so I think that the answer key is wrong. So once we add $11,400 plus $23,850, we get $35,250. And so that says that the salary in 2002 should be $35,250. Um, and so when you are doing this on your test, I am looking for two things. I am looking for this model right here, this 950X plus 23,850. And then I am looking for this right here, um, once, what, what it is when it's predicted, what you get when you predict that. Okay, um, so let's move on to number six. Number six is um, exponents. So here I've got 4x to the third times y to the negative fifth, and all of that is being raised to the negative two. So the first thing that we are going to deal with is we are going to deal with this negative two right here. And this negative two belongs to everything in here. It's similar to the distributive property. Now it's not the distributive property. It's our exponent properties, but a lot of students like to think about it that way. Now one of the things that students get confused on is that this negative 2 also applies to that 4. So we have 4 raised to the negative 2 power. Okay, That does not make the 4 negative. We are raising the 4 to a negative power. Now when I've got x to the third raised to the negative 2 power, I multiply those exponents and I get x to the negative 6th exponent. y to the negative 5th, the negative 5 is raised to the negative 2. And when I multiply those two exponents, I get a positive exponent. So that is y to the 10th. Now, my 4 to the negative 2 and my x to the negative 6, because of those negative exponents, I've got to move those to the denominator. So then I have 4 squared. Once I move it to the denominator, it's no longer a negative exponent. And I have x to the 6. Now I can keep going with that 4 squared. So that 4 squared becomes 16x 
to the sixth. So this is my final answer right here. Okay, um, so let's look at number seven. Number seven, we are also dealing with exponents. When you are dealing with exponents like this that are multiplied together, the first thing that I want you to do is I want you to see if there's anything outside the exponents or anything outside the parentheses that are being raised. Is the whole entire thing being raised to an exponent? Um, and on the previous one, it was. On this one, it's not. So I've got right here, I don't have anything, and right here, I don't have anything. Okay, so if I had anything in those two spots, I would need to look at that. Um, so because I don't, I'm really doing negative 2, a to the negative ninth, times 3, a to the negative second. Um, because I'm at this point, I can multiply my numbers. My negative 2 and my 3 aren't being raised to anything. So I'm going to go ahead and, and just multiply those. Um, negative 2 times positive 3 is negative 6. Then I can follow my exponent rules. So I have a to the negative 9th in times a to the negative second. And when I do that, the exponent rules tell me to add their exponents. So I am going to have a to the negative 11th. Now I really want to point, point out two different things right here. What is happening? Here, my negative six, it's the six that's negative. That is not a negative exponent. And so my negative six is gonna stay in the numerator of my fraction. It's the a to the negative 11th. That's what has to be moved to the dot denominator because the exponent is negative. Um, so I'm going to have a to the 11th. So negative 6 over a to the 11th is my final answer. You might write it as negative 6 or negative 6 over a to the 11th with your negative kind of in front of that. I would say most students just leave it like this, and, and that is 100% correct. Okay, now number eight, we are um, simplifying the square root of 60. We're simplifying the square root of 60. So what we're going to do is we're going to break that 60 up. Now, um, we have to find the largest perfect square factor. So I could break 60 up into 10 times 6, but that doesn't get me anywhere because 10 nor 6 is a perfect square. I could do 12 times 5, but again, that doesn't get me anywhere because it's not a perfect square. What we want to break this up to is 4 times 15, and the reason for that is because 4 is a perfect square. So the square root of 60 becomes the square root of 4 times 15. I can take the square root of 4, which is 2, so I have 2 on the square root of 15. And that is my final answer, 2 on the square root of 15. Okay, now our next one is the square root of 27 over the square root of 4. Now, if this was the square root of 27 over the square root of something like 5, what we would need to do is we would need to multiply the numerator and the denominator by the square root of 5. That's called rationalizing the denominator. Um, in this situation, though, we are very fortunate because we can simplify the square root of 4. Um, the square root of 4 is 2. So once I simplify the square root of 4, I get the square root of 27 over 2, and I have dealt with that denominator. Okay? So just remember, though, if you've got something that's not a perfect square in the denominator, to rationalize that denominator, you've got to multiply the top and the bottom by that. Okay? So... So, so be careful with that one. This one is a little bit simpler than some of the other ones that we've seen. Now, we still have work to do on the top. We have the square root of 27, and that breaks down into the perfect square of 9 times 3. So I've got the square root of 9 times 3 over 2. I can take the square root of 9, which is 3. So I have 3 on the square root of 3 over 2. And that is my final answer. 3 on the square root of 3 over 2. Now, for number 10, um, this is a um, radical 
we've got a radical um, on one side of the equation, and you do need to be prepared to do this. Um, the way that we solve this equation is that we square both sides. Now, in this situation right here, I've got the square root of n plus 4 already on one side of the equation. So I don't need to move anything over. But before you can square both sides, it's super important that you make sure that this radical is isolated to one side of the equation. So I've got the square root of n plus 4 equals n plus 4. That has to be by itself before I can square it. So now I'm going to square both sides. The, the right-hand side, that is n plus 4 squared, we've got to foil that. Now the, the left-hand side, the square root of n plus 4 squared just gives me n plus 4. So when I square n plus 4 times n plus 4, I have n squared plus 4n plus 4n plus 16. Okay, so then I have n, so I have n plus 4 equals n squared plus 8n plus 16. Now, hopefully you've identified that it's a quadratic, okay? Hopefully you've identified that it's a quadratic, um, and so you've got to make it equal to zero. So I'm going to subtract n, and I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides, okay? And then I end up with zero on the left-hand side, and I have n squared minus 7n plus 12, okay? I can factor that. Oh, I've got plus 7n. Sorry about that. Okay, 8n minus n is plus 7n. Um, I can factor that to n plus 3 and n plus 4. And the reason I can do that is 3 times 4 is 12, and 3 plus 4 is 7. So when I solve for that, I get n plus 3 equals 0, n plus 4 equals 0, and n can be negative 3, and n can be negative 4. Okay, so we have to go back and we have to check this. So it's super, super important that we check to make sure that these both work. So I'm going to check these. Um, I'm going to check n minus 3, for, n equals negative 3 first. Um, so I'm going to have negative 3 plus 4 equals negative 3 plus 4, and that's the square root of negative 3 plus 4. So negative 3 plus 4 is positive 1. And so I have the square root of positive 1 equals negative 3 plus 4, which is also positive 1, and 1 equals 1. Okay, so that one works. Now I've got to go back and check n equals negative 4. Okay, so I'm going to do negative 4 plus 4 equals, and that's the square root of that, equals negative 4 plus 4. Negative 4 plus 4 is 0. Now remember, we are allowed to take the square root of 0. We're not allowed to take the square root of a negative number, but we are allowed to take the square root of 0. And the square root of 0 is 0. So we have 0 equals 0. Okay? So both of them work. So that means both of these are a solution to this. And sometimes students are like, but one of them should be thrown out, or both of them should be thrown out, and it could you can keep both of them, you can throw out both of them, or you could keep one and throw out one. So it's super, super important that you do your check to make sure that you're you've got that correct. Okay? Uh, let's do the next one. And the directions for this say to solve using the method of your choice. Now remember, on your final exam, you have to solve one using completing the square. And this is actually a good one to practice, completing the square. So I am going to solve this one using completing the square, because this one can't be factored. Um, so the first thing I do is I move that 13 to the other side, and I do that by subtracting 13 from both sides. So I've got negative 13 on both sides. Okay, my next step is I look at my B value, which is 4. I take half of that. Half of 4 is 2, and then I square 2, and 2 squared is 4. So I am adding 4 to both sides. Okay, so now I have x squared plus 4x 
plus 4 equals negative 9. Okay? Now, by design, we created a perfect squared trinomial. By design. Okay? And when I factor x squared plus 4x plus 4, I get x plus 2 squared. And we did that on purpose. That's what we wanted to do. Okay? My next step is to take the square root of both sides. Now, when I take the square root of negative 9, I have to put the plus or minus in front of it. Don't forget that. It's plus or minus the square root of negative 9. So then I'm left with x plus 2 equals plus or minus the square root of negative 1 times 9. So I, I, I split that. Now, the square root of negative 1 is i, and the square root of 9 is 3. So I have x plus 2 equals plus or minus i times 3. Now remember, traditionally, you're going to see that written as plus or minus 3i. Okay, now my last step is to isolate the variable. So I am subtracting 2 from both sides, and I am going to rewrite this right here. So I have x equals um, negative 2 plus or minus 3i. And that is my final answer. And remember, that's a situation where it does not cross the x-axis. That is a complex or an imaginary solution, and our parabola would not cross the x-axis. Okay, okay, number 12, number 12. We have 4t squared minus 7t equals 1. Um, before we can decide anything about this one, we've got to set it equal to 0. So I have 4t squared minus 7t minus 1. So I have moved that 1 to the left. Okay, now I can try to factor it, but it doesn't factor. Okay, it does not factor. Um, and so I have to use the quadratic formula on this. Um, and the reason that I'm choosing quadratic formula instead of completing the square is because my A value is not 1 and my B value is not even. Um, so the quadratic formula is... Um, is what I choose. You certainly could choose to do completing the square. Um, I typically would choose the quadratic formula in this situation. So I've got negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Now, you cannot identify your a, b, and your c value unless you've got it in standard form, which is set equal to zero. So be sure that before you start identifying your a, b, and c, that you've got it set equal to zero. So my a value is four, my b value is negative, and my c value is negative one. My b value is negative seven, so I always like to do them when I've got a negative b value, because um, I think it helps you really pay attention with that. Okay, so um, my Quadratic formula part is going to be in blue, and the numbers that I'm plugging in are going to be in red. Um, so I think that helps you see that. So I've got a negative b. So I have negative, negative 7. And remember, that is going to become a positive. Um, that is one of the places that students make mistakes with their computation. Okay, and then I've got plus or minus the square root. I am going to be squaring my negative number. So I'm squaring b. Okay, so you, I like to write that in parentheses and very clearly identify that that's a negative number. So I've got um, b squared minus 4. My a value um, is also 4. And then I have a negative c value. So I've got 4 times my a value times my c value. And I'm putting that c value in parentheses again because I want to, to, to have the difference there. I want us to really be clear about that. And then all of that is over 2 times my A value, which is 4. Okay? So I have a negative, negative 7. So that gives me positive 7. 
plus or minus, and remember we're squaring a negative, so that becomes a positive. Negative four times four is negative 16, then I multiply that times negative one, and I get positive 16. So that's 49 plus positive 16, and that is all over eight. So I have seven plus or minus the square root of 65 over eight. And I need to look at that 65 and make sure that I can't simplify that 65 any further, that there's not a perfect square in there that I need to break down. And there isn't, and so that is my final answer. Seven plus or minus the square root of 65 over eight. Okay, now our last one um, is a rational equation that we are going to solve. Um, and we know how to solve this, so we just gotta stick with it and, and, and follow all of our rules. Um, the first thing I need to do is I need to identify my LCD. And my LCD is x and x minus one. So I am actually gonna multiply everything times x, x minus one, okay? So I have x times x minus one over one times my original first term, which is three over x, okay? Then I have x times x minus one times um, seven over x minus one, and that equals one times x, x minus one, okay? Now after I've done this, I can start um, crossing things out, and by design, we want to end up with an equation that has no, um, no denominators. Okay, so I've marked out my x's, so I'm left with three times x minus one. Okay, then I'm gonna mark out x minus one and x minus seven, and then I'm left with x times seven, or seven x. Okay, and then I don't have anything to, to cross out on the, the right-hand side, so then I've just got x times x minus one. And so we've gotten rid of all of our denominators, and it does look a little bit messy, um, but we are going to um, multiply this all out and it turns out to be a quadratic. So I've got 3x minus 3 um, plus 7x equals x squared minus 1x. Um, on the right hand side I've got 3x plus 7x, so that's going to give me 10x. Okay, um, so now I'm going to subtract 10x from both sides, and I'm going to add 3 to both sides. So I'm subtracting 10x, and I'm adding 3. Okay, and then I'm left with x squared minus 11x plus 3. Okay, x squared minus 11x plus 3, and that is not going to, to factor, okay? It's not going to factor. I'm going to use the quadratic formula. You certainly could use um, completing the square, but because that b value is even, uh, or it, because that b value is not even, um, I, I would I would go ahead and use the quadratic formula. Okay, um, so I'm going to erase all this because I had to get I got to get down to my original or my quadratic that we've got to put in the quadratic formula. Okay, so I've got x squared minus 11x plus 3 equals 0. Okay, and so we are going to use negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay, um, so my a value is 1. My B value is negative 11, and my C value is 3. So I have negative B, um, which is negative 11. So negative and negative is going to be a positive. Uh, then I have plus or minus the square root 
of b squared. So we're squaring a negative number. So I have negative 11 squared minus 4 times my a value, which is 1, um, times my c value, which is 3. And that is all over 2 times a. Okay, so now we are going to simplify all this out. Negative and negative is positive. Okay, and then I have negative 11 squared, that's 121, minus 4 times 1 times 3. So that is minus 12. Okay, so negative 4 times 1 times 3 is negative 12, and that is all over 2. Okay, and so then we are left with 11 plus or minus the square root of 109 over 2. Now we always need to check and see, can this 109 be broken up into a perfect square? And it can't, okay? So 11 plus or minus the square root of 109 over 2 is our final answer. Okay, um, you will have a second practice test updated and then so you can practice this and watch the videos and then you can do that second practice test. So please let me know if you've got any questions and I will see you this week.